Howdy folks, uh, welcome back to the fly shop here uh, at Frog Hollow. We're calling it the cabin. Uh, today we're continuing our fly tying series. Uh, this particular fly is a simple swing fly that we use for fall and winter steelhead. It is that season. Uh, it's mid-November here. We've got a good run of steelhead this fall and this fly has been productive uh, for a lot of years and we tie it in a variety of colors. Uh, today, just for illustration, I'm going to tie probably the top producer which is this olive and uh, rag uh, yarn orange head with some fire tiger flashaboo. Uh, this pattern, uh, of, of course, uh, you can use this on a single hand rod or a two handed rod or a spay rod. Uh, we mostly fish them with spay rods with sinking heads uh, to get the fly down. Uh, water temperatures are cold. Fish move back into the slack water. So we've got to get the fly down and then control the speed of the fly. And that's generally done best with a two-handed rod so that you have line management with that long uh, fishing rod. So uh, this is no different than most swing flies. The hook is uh, suspended in the tail. We have materials that shroud over the fly, a lot of motion. This happens to be rabbit strip and flashaboo. Flashaboo is a key element in Great Lakes swing flies. Some of the flies that the guys tie are nothing but flashaboo with some sort of head to make the flashaboo move. Uh, I like to incorporate uh, some natural fibers, so we're using rabbit strip. The difference uh, in this pattern and some of those that are out there is that I'm using a connector here that is a small silicone tube uh, that allows you to, and I'm connecting it with the 30 pound spectrum, which is a, uh, which is a braid. It allows you to move the hook anywhere you'd like. If you want it off to the side, for example, you can do that. If you want it on the bottom, you can do that. And it fits over the, the, uh, the stinger hook tight enough so when you move that hook in the attitude that you want it, it stays there. So it's a simple matter of uh, a, a little different spin on how to attach that stinger hook. Let's get started. First thing I've done is I've taken a up eye salmon hook. This happens to be a Tamco 7999. I cut off the bend of the hook to the length that I want and I'm going to mount it up in the vise and we're going to start this pattern. First thing we do is we take a chunk of the 30 pound spectrum. This stuff is really really strong as most of you are aware. It also is very difficult to cut so you need really sharp scissors and it's not the easiest thing on the planet to get through the eye of the fly. Let's hope that I'm successful here on the first try. Look at that, I was. So we're going to go over the hook and pull. And then this comes out almost exactly the same uh, attitude as the shank of this hook. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to run that through, run that meaning the spectrum connector, run that through the tube. So we're going to feed that through the tube like so. Well, that hook is sharp. These are, uh, once you get your stuff all set up, these are pretty easy to tie. I'm having a little bit of a struggle right there with that. Hang in there with me. There we go. Getting that spectrum through there. Okay, so we're just going to slide that onto the tube now. Just like that. And that then is going to get the material itself, the spectrum, is going to get attached 
to the shank of this hook. So we're going to move this up right there and we're going to dress that hook with thread and start tying the fly. Now that we've got the trailer hook set to go. And the end of that tube is going to slide over the end of that cutoff hook shank. You'll see that here in a second. I'm just going to dress this hook shank so we can uh, we can have our materials not slide around. Okay, we're going to do that right like that. We're going to lash that down both pieces of the spectrum. This is critical. Fold it back and wrap over it both sides. That locks that spectrum into place. Now it can go nowhere. We'll cut that out. This is very tough stuff. It's braided polyester and man it is tough. Now a little spot of glue right there uh, I like to do. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the body on. This is a real sparse fly but the body is I like on this particular color and on the other colors I use just different colors of this material. Uh, this is UV polar chenille. This happens to be in copper. I like copper and olive. Copper and black for steelhead are amazing. Those are the two top colors. So here we go. We're going to tie that in. And we're going to stop right about there. And this just gives some body to this fly. I'm going to flare that material as you go. I use this material on a lot of flies. I use it on Oh, the artic articulated sculpin. I use it on the Zoncora. Uh, just real buggy material. And as you know, there's magic in copper flash. So that's what that body's going to look like right there. Okay. Next comes the rabbit strip. Rabbit strip is blunt like this and it has hair all the way down to where this is cut off. What you want to do is trim just a patch where there's no hair. And we're talking about a sixteenth of an inch here, not much. So that when you tie this in, you're tying it down on the hide and not on top of the hair. You get in trouble that way um, just because you're not tying down on the hide, uh, this is slippery stuff and so you want the best security that you can get. And that's the best security. Now we're going to go ahead and cut this. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit so you can see it better. We're going to go ahead and cut this right at the length of the stinger hook. We want a nice big profile on this fly. So there we go. And the next thing is we are going to add the Flashaboo Fire Tiger. This is what this stuff looks like. A little hint here, um, you know this stuff is difficult to get out of the package. What I do is I cut a little slice out of this plastic bag. You can see that slice that I've cut out there. And I just reach in and grab some of these fibers and pull it out there so I have a manageable amount. The rest of it's still in the bag. It's not getting all messed up in your fly tying drawer. Now you can take what you want and you've got a manageable, easy amount of this stuff that you can easily deal with. So I've cut out what I want there. I'm going to shag this up a little bit on the end because we're going to tie that in across the back here. That's a good amount of flashaboo, but I'm telling you, 
a lot of the guides tie their flies with nothing but flashaboo. So is it too much? Answer is no. So there it is right across the top. I'm going to flare that out just a little bit. I'm going to sling this under on the underside as well. However, I'm going to cut this short. When I say short, I mean about like so. What I want is just some flash on the bottom of the fly. I don't want it as, as long as the top of the wing. So I'm just going to cut that just like that. I'll reserve that for the next fly. And next, we're going to put the, uh, the dubbing head on it. So depending on the color of the fly, you can use orange, you can use chartreuse, you can use red, many colors. Uh, lots of guys do many colors on this. I prefer this pumpkin orange. Uh, I've got, I've mixed the dubbings. The dubbing here is uh, crystal, no, it's ice dub orange and a little bit of uh, synthetic orange dubbing. So I've mixed it so I've got a little bit of flash. What I'm doing here is I'm aligning these dubbing fibers because I'm going to push stack this. So as I'm pulling, I'm aligning these fibers. All of a sudden, I don't have anything left to pull. I know that these fibers are lined up nice. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to push this right over the eye of the hook, just like that. And I'm going to go around this 360 degrees and just pull up on it, groom this back, drop the thread in between up front and you have that head that we're looking for. It's that simple. By doing that, you're taking this dubbing, let's pull it apart, see the fibers, the staple stays together, stack, pull, all of a sudden you've got this long staple that when you tie it in the center and then push this back over it, you get this beautiful flared head that is what we're looking for. We're done with this fly. Well, at least this portion of it. So let's whip finish it. Now I've stayed back away from the eye of the fly a little ways so that we can do any kind of knot that you want here. You can do a polymer knot, you can do a regular clinch knot, an improved clinch knot, a loop knot, or you can also um, uh, tie this so that the leader material comes off the side of the hook uh, to give the fly a sideways profile uh, and get a, a real nice flutter. So we're going to take this out of the vise now, and we're going to take a look here. You can see where the end of this hook is sticking out. You just simply pull the rubber or the silicone rubber back and slide that over that hook. And now you can adjust the hook attitude however you want it. So I'm going to want it up, and that's what it looks like. You can comb out this head a little bit. There will be a few fibers there. But that is, that is a swing fly, extraordinaire, simple, strong, easy to tie. Tie it with confidence, fish it with love.